Hi, this is Adam with GVTV here at RTX 2014 with Ray Navarez Jr. That is me. Of Achievement Hunter. Yay! I think my title is content creator and editor at Achievement Hunter. But I definitely, I get pulled around sometimes at Rooster Teeth, so I do this, do a little bit of that. So I stream on Twitch for fun, nothing serious, but yeah, I'm all over the place. But yeah, the only social media I use is Twitter. Awesome. It's the easiest for me. Now, we just saw you in the Let's Play GTA 5. Yeah. The group heist. Now, whose idea was that? That was Jeff's idea. He wanted to do another heist for uh, RTX. or do, He wanted to do something special for RTX, so we went with a heist. And the reason we did that is because people seem to love it. We've done six already, one for each of us, and people wanted some more. And then he threw together that... Uh, that heist like yesterday because in Achievement Hunter fashion it's like we need to film some for tomorrow so let's brainstorm today and that's what came up. That's what came up. <laughs> that, well we had more it, planned but of course then we never got that far in. I know how about that spawn? Yeah I was all the way on the north side of the map so it took me like 15 minutes to even get to everybody so uh, that's the beauty of editing you would never see that in a video we would just be right next yep. to each other. Well it was still an amazing let's play laughed my head off. I'm glad you enjoyed it. That, that was just great. You mm. just had the entire crowd just... Yeah. There's a lot of people there. A lot more people than I thought. So I hope they enjoyed it. it w is the turnout like more? Yeah. Than? Each RTX is the fourth one. Each RTX has grown exponentially bigger each year. So next year, I mean, I don't even know. Like, yeah. I think we sold like... You have to ask Barbara. Like, like a shitload of tickets. Like I think we sold more than last year. And it just seems like there's a much, much more people around. Yeah. This year is just a sea of people. Yeah. It's just... It's not that hard to get around. You know, I've been yeah. to weird places that's hard to get around. Yeah, like PAX and stuff like that. PAX has a lot of people, and it's just sometimes it feels like it's impossible to get around. And RTX is eventually going to get to that point where it's going to be like, oh, I can't move. I'm just stuck between everybody. But so far, so far it's not too bad. And all the staff have uh, PAs and guardians that will help them get from point A to point B because the fans are so, like, loving, and they want us to sign and take pictures. And we want to do that, but sometimes uh, we need to get to certain places. And, you know, it's hard for us to be like, sorry, I can't, you know for whatever reason, so we have the Guardian do it. We, we, you know, they volunteer so they can be mean for us. Yeah. That'd be awesome, be mean for someone else. Just yeah. get out of here. You just got back from a charity event. Can yes. you tell us a little about that? Yeah, the charity event I went to was in Denver, Colorado. It was called Summer Games Done Quick. This is the shirt I actually got there. It's got a whole bunch of video game characters like Octodad and Donkey Kong and stuff like that. But it's a speedrunning charity. If you don't know what speedrunning is, simply put is you want to beat the game as fast as possible, whether you use glitches or, or, uh, or you do it legitimately. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I've been a fan of speedrunning since January 2012. And they always have two big events each year. They have AGDQ, which is generally in January, and then they have SGDQ, which is the smaller one that's uh, around now, like late June, early July. And uh, essentially, it's just a week-long charity where um, you just watch speed runs, and people who are good at their craft will go and uh, do a speed run live. And it's, it's for me anyway. I find it really, really entertaining as somebody who does, you know, plays video games for a living, and you know, plays, you know, the same games over and over again. And you know, I don't get any better at them. Is Ray dead? He it's mutilated me. <laughs> to see these guys grind out a game for weeks, sometimes months, and like however long it takes to do like a run of like say like a, a classic like Ocarina of Time or like a Super Metroid or something is impressive. And going to the event live and seeing like all the excitement and the hype in person was was incredible, and I, I really really enjoyed it. Now, did you speed run anything? I do not. A lot of people ask me if I speed run anything. The answer is no. I do not speed run anything. I don't have the. Uh, I don't have the skill. I don't have the patience. I don't have the discipline. Right now, I'm just a. Uh, I'm just a viewer, and I find it like a super, super interesting thing. And they did a great job at AGDQ this year. They raised over a million dollars for Doctors Without Borders, and then the one I went to uh, last week, uh, which is the smaller event, raised seven hundred thousand dollars for Doctors Without Borders. So almost two million dollars within two events. Just whole bunch of nerds playing video games fast and it's uh yeah it was probably one of the some of the most fun i've ever had at an event like that yeah that's great you're hearing about a lot more events where it's becoming playing video games for charity yeah. I mean, operation supply drop operation supply drop operation supply drop excuse me uh you know got extra life and child's play you got all these all these cool uh, charities and you know people are super into it and they raise a lot of money for great causes well it's nice when organizations like that are created to let gamers you know oh yeah you know you want to help well, gamers always have a bad rap. Like, they're always considered, like, you know, living in their parents' basement, obese, and stuff like that. To, so to see, like, events like SGDQ, where you get groups of, like, hundreds and hundreds of gamers just play games for the entertainment of other people, and people are willing to donate 
uh, for a good cause, it's great. It makes makes gamers look much better than you know the uh, the cliche that is bestowed upon them. Yeah. Now you said you don't speed or anything. Yeah. I've seen you play Call of Duty. I've yeah. seen your streams. You're fast. I've yeah. seen you play. You know, free for all with the guys. Mm -hmm. it just it's for, <laughs> it's for, a massacre. for Call of Duty. Call of Duty is the. Call of Duty and then it moved to Titanfall, but Call of Duty was the game I played with friends like almost every day after work. Like obviously at work we'll play like GTA and Minecraft and whatever doing for Let's Plays or I'll play games specifically for uh, achievement guides or whatever. But when I go home, you know, I still play games because that's, that's my hobby. So I'll play with some friends and I'll be like, let's hop on Call of Duty, let's hop on Titanfall. And we'll play for like two or three hours and I, did, I do that almost every single day and then it's just like, excuse me, I naturally get better because people like Jeff and Michael, you know, they don't play Call of Duty like hours upon hours on end. So when we do free-for-alls, it's like, I mean, it's not really fair because I know how to play the game and I know the maps and all this stuff, but I mean, realistically, it's for entertainment purposes, so I guess it's not that serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, everybody, like, everybody has their game. Like, Jack has Trials and, uh, you know, Michael. Michael's also a very good gamer, even though he does, like, Rage Quinn, stuff like that. But he's also a very good gamer. Ryan, also a very good gamer. But, like, everybody has, like, their set or set thing. Gavin is another one who's really, really good at trials. So Jeff was Peggle too. It's like unrealistic how good he is at that game. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting reading the comments where it's like, oh, Gavin, you know, Gavin's just going to be Gavin. And mm -hmm. you got to remember when he was hired on to Rooster Teeth, he had one of the toughest achievements in Halo 2. Mm -hmm. You know, that that is something I've never achieved. Yeah, people, uh, well, the comment section is usually just a bad idea to read because yeah, so it's, 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 it's a lot of, yeah, 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 it's a lot of negativity. But People, a lot of, uh, one of the most common misconceptions is that, like, if we play Worms, for example, and Gavin kills himself in a very, very dumb way, people are like, oh, he did that on purpose. It's like, no, you have to be in the room to see Gavin play Worms, because something about Worms, which you don't see in the, the Let's Play, because you only take it from one perspective, when, uh, when it's your Worm, you can use the right stick to move the camera, but you can still move your Worm with the left stick. So he was, for one instance, he, like, walk, walked off the edge into the water. Um, and for his footage, he panned the camera to like see where we were, and while he was moving his camera back to his worm, he was moving his worm, not knowing he was by the water, and then it's just like bloop, and he just died. And people were like, some people were upset, and people thought it was funny. I'm like, that's just how Gavin plays worms. He's he's not exactly great at it. Or anytime he uses like the rope or something, it's always a disaster. But it's funny. Yeah, I've played worms. That's that's a difficult game, man. That just that clock just ticking down. Yeah, the worst part is is you're on you're on a time constraint, and obviously with the new worms games, like. We don't play the games beforehand. We kind of just go in blunt, and there's all these weapons that we don't know what they do. Obviously, there's like recurring weapons like the bazooka or the rope or something. We kind of know how to use that, but having like trying to figure out a move and say you have like eight seconds left and trying to do that move in eight seconds without wasting your turn is super stressful. And that's why you get like us flinging us ourselves across the the world or taking damage or something like that. So it's not about being good because being good isn't exactly always entertaining for us. It's kind of like. We're not great at video games, so watch us fail, and hopefully you enjoy it. Yes, and we do enjoy it. You guys are great. We just love watching you guys have thank you, fun. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about having fun. And also, your achievement guides have probably boosted my score tenfold. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad I can, uh, I'm glad I can help. Achievement guides obviously <clears throat> don't do great as view-wise. That's why um, uh, Achievement Hunter has kind of strayed away. Uh, from that, and they do more shows like Versus and Go and all that stuff because they get uh, they get views with achievement guides like. You can obviously make an achievement guide somewhat uh, entertaining, but the majority of people who are going to watch it are going to have are going to be people who have the game or understand the game and need help. So that's why, like, it kind of like the viewers are kind of much much lower than Let's Plays. Where if you know if somebody's never played Worms, it's like, well, these guys are going to play Worms. Maybe I wonder what the game is like. And people have told us many times, like, I've bought Trials, I've bought Worms, I bought Minecraft because you guys have played it. So it's cool that people watch our videos and see a game we play, and, uh, and they're like. I'm going to go get that, or I'm going to go play that with my friends. So It's a very, really, really cool thing. So many people bought Minecraft because of you guys. Mojang yeah. put the Tower of Pimps in. <laughs> that's, that's insane. The Tower of Pimps, if you don't know, is, is, the, is a trophy that we made in Minecraft, which is one obsidian block and four gold blocks uh, over. And that was made in Minecraft Let's Play Episode 2 uh, because of Gavin being completely intoxicated. He went to my chest, and he made four gold blocks. That's the amount of gold I just happened to have. And then he said, you know whatever gaze upon me on the Tower of Pimps. And then I think it was a little bit later that we added the the obsidian block on the bottom just so we can like place it on something. Obviously I got dirt because it's me. But yeah, that's like the stand. But yeah, and it's crazy to think months and months and months later, the Tower of Pimps is like an official thing. Like if you go into the tutorial world in the, I think it's the Sandstone Pyramid, 
directly in the center is just sitting right there. It's like so surreal that that happened. And just drop down. You might see her right there. And oh, boom! Fuck me. There's Holy a tower shit. of pimps. I can't that believe. That is amazing. I can't it's in the game. Now, here at RTX, there's a lot of new games on the floor. Yeah. A lot of betas for people to play, a lot of stuff to try out. Yeah. Is there anything that you in particular are looking forward to? I want to see and hopefully play Sunset Overdrive. I saw that on the main stage earlier. That game looks pretty incredible. And then Hotline Miami 2 I also saw uh, by the uh, Digital Devolver. I, I'm, I'm hoping I'm saying their name right. Uh, I saw it there, and I loved Hotline Miami 1, so I'm definitely going to have to try and kind of like sneak over there, whether it be at the end of the convention or I come in early and play it because uh, I'm a huge fan of that game. And then obviously you have like the Halo Master Chief Collection that I would like to see and and stuff like that, but those are those are probably the three big games I'm interested in seeing. Of course, there's probably little, little nooks and crannies that I can look for other games, but those are the ones that I saw on the first day anyway that I look forward to playing. <laughs> RTX is great because if you'll find a booth and something you like, whether it's like, I want to buy merch, or I want to check out like every single piece of, uh, or every single item that's been in, like an immersion or a short, there's like a whole thing dedicated to that. So look around, find something you like, and pretty much have a good time. I mean, like me, myself, I did a quick walk around earlier today and I just looked at like some, a lot of booths that like I'm going to check out later or you know stuff I want to buy. And then uh, as far as panels go, there's a lot of panels that I, I'm going to try and see. Like obviously we have the Achievement Hunter panels which we have to be on. But I mean like the Game Grumps panel I want to see, uh, Retsu Prey, uh, Inside Gaming, there's a lot, of, a lot of great stuff here to check out. Well awesome and we'll, we'll definitely be sure to be there. And yes. Thank you once again. Thank you very much for having me. Thank Appreciate you for being it. here sir. That's Adam and Ray Navarro with GVTV at RTX 2014.